What's up guys, hello and welcome to the Car Passion channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install rev limiter gauge faces on your Miata. And in case you've never heard of rev limiter, come take a quick trip with me inside my laptop. I'll show you what these guys are all about. All right, so this is revlimiter.net and Adam has got a really cool vlog on here with lots of Miata content. And he's also got a store with tons and tons of really cool products for your Miata, like these retro window switches. He's got really cool looking oil caps, just a ton of stuff, you can see the list here probably most well known for his gauge faces and look at the variety of gauge faces you have to choose from when you change the faces in your car it can really change the whole interior feeling this is something that you're looking at every few seconds when you're driving and that can make a very big impact on how the interior feels this is one of my favorites here the gt40 replica gauges and then this one's hilarious also the miata turbo.net special you have the party cat you has turbo party over, party started for your fuel gauge. And these are just all the off the shelf versions. If you have a crazy idea that you wanna put into your car, he also does completely custom gauge faces like these, uh, the TIE Fighter from Star Wars. And I know this one has definitely circulated around the internet a lot, the Doge gauge faces. In case you're wondering where these come from, they came from Rev Limiter. Someone had a crazy idea to put Doge in their Miata and they submitted it to Rev Limiter and they came out absolutely hilarious. So all the off-the-shelf gauge faces are only 129 bucks, and it's just the faces here, not the entire cluster. That's what I'm going to be showing you how to install today. So check out RevLimiter.net. It's got tons and tons of products to browse through and really high-quality photos. Who knows? You might find something for your Miata that you want to pick up today. So Adam at RevLimiter was kind enough to send me a set of his gauge faces to do an install video on. And normally I don't do unboxing videos, but I saw on the site that they include stickers and other goodies, so I figured I might want to film the unboxing. Yeah, oh, there are indeed more than just gauge faces. So you have your nice, pretty rev limiter box. I'm assuming the faces are in there. Personalized note, what do we have here? My gauge is included in 85 Honda CRX. Coincidentally, I do not have in my Hot Wheels collection yet, so this is perfect. Candy to chew on while I install my gauge faces. And as advertised, decals that will probably increase the horsepower of your engine. No promises on that. I chose the revolvers. They're nice and simple. I like that the speedometer goes to 160. I also like that the speedometer does not have a kilometers per hour, so it doesn't really look as clustered. It's just a really, really clean looking gauge set. It's very important that you do not touch the gauge faces, especially with your bare fingers. You're going to be wearing gloves for the entire install, but you don't want anything to touch the gauge faces and don't try to clean them with any sort of liquid. That includes water, rubbing alcohol, anything like that. The gauges have a very, very nice matte finish. And if you want them to stay like that, it's advised that you don't let anything touch them. I'd also like to say that I'd love for you to use my video as a guide for installation of these gauge faces, but I also urge you to hop on revlimiter.net and check out their very, very detailed installation instructions if you're gonna be installing these yourself. All right, enough talking already. I can't wait to get these things installed. First thing we're gonna do here is remove the cluster from the car. So you're sitting here in the driver's seat. We're gonna remove the Phillips head screws from underneath here. Then your case just splits like this. Go ahead and remove both pieces. And underneath the gauge cluster, there's a Phillips head screw on each side, two total. They look like this, remove those. Go ahead and grab the gauge hood, give it a pull. It's just held on with these clips, so with a good pull, the hood will come off. Next up, you're gonna loosen the cluster itself. You can see we've got two Phillips head screws down on the bottom and two up on the top. The gauge cluster is loose as you can see now, but we still have a few things to disconnect before we can pull it out. This plug here, got another plug on the other side, and then down there you can see the speedometer cable. It can take a little bit of patience on the first time you try to remove them, but they get pretty easy after you've done it a few times. Speedometer cable is a little bit more tricky, but I'm gonna do the best I can to show you. Basically I have to get on the back side of this clip here and push it in. And at the front, you can see a little tooth that holds it in. Once you get in there and start playing with it, you'll figure out how it works. And once you pull it out, you'll see there's one more clip here you have to undo. Just do that by hand, it's so easy. 
then you can pull your cluster out. And here's the speedometer cable connector. You just have to push that little back piece and you can pull it right off. Here's our stock gauge cluster and the first thing we have to do is just take a look at how crappy our stock gauges look in comparison to the rev limiter ones. I really didn't realize it until I put them side by side, but I just got really excited about putting these things in. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually separate the plastic from the stock cluster. And you're gonna do that by just by hand pinching out each one of these little clips that surrounds the entire front face. What I like to do is push this first clip down and just put a little bit of pressure with your other hand trying to separate the face. You don't want to put a lot of pressure because you don't want to crack anything, but by putting a little bit of pressure, it'll leave this clip unbuckled here. And when you do the second one, you can see it separates a little bit more and then it's easier to keep apart. Come over here to the third one. Look at that. Ooh, wow. This thing really wanted new gauges. One thing you have to be aware of is this little harness here kind of have to feed through that hole to get the cluster apart. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on. Now I'm gonna remove the needles, which should be pretty easy with the prying tools. You wanna to get the tools underneath the needle and then pry against the small Phillips head screws on the factory gauge faces. Look at that. and then use a small Phillips head to remove the factory gauge faces. Be really careful not to scratch your factory gauge faces when you're pulling these screws out, as they are very hard to repair. Now you're left with this, and Adam on his installation instructions makes a very specific note to not attempt to roll back your factory odometer because there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're gonna break it, so probably not a good idea to try that. I went with the optional LED kit, so at this stage, I'm gonna be installing those. There are four main cluster bulbs. They are these dark green ones here, and to remove them, simply spin them counterclockwise about 45 degrees, and they come out like that. The switch over to the LED bulb is really simple. You just pull on the stock bulb to get it out of the socket and slide in the new LED replacement. Kind of clicks into place. They go back in the same way they came out. This part's a little tricky because as you can see, you have your airbag and your headlight indicator on the bottom of the stock tack. So what happens is on the new tack on the bottom, it won't light up properly because the stock cluster is designed to have that little housing for the airbag light and the headlight indicator. So what you're gonna have to do is actually break out the partition so your new tack will light up correctly. So what we wanna do is carefully use diagonal cutters to make breaks in this partition. When you're done, it should look something like this, and that'll allow the light from the LEDs or the stock bulbs to reach the bottom of the new tack face. And this actually is reversible if you ever wanted to go back to your stock gauges, and there's a little mini write-up on how to do that with the installation instructions. Now I'm gonna put the new needle stoppers into the gauges that require them. Again, you wanna be really careful when handling the new faces not to touch them, even if you are wearing gloves. I'll take one of the included needle stoppers, put it where it goes in the tack there, and then I'll put a little piece of clear tape right over the back of it. You'll need to do the same thing for the oil pressure gauge. Finally, get to put the new faces on. So I've removed the old face from this little carrier I'm gonna put the carrier back on and then install my awesome new tachometer. It's gonna hang by that little pin up there. No matter how you do it, you just wanna be really careful putting the screws back in because the faces are easy to scratch. So they sit in there like that and then you don't need to make these very tight, just pretty much until they bottom out and a little snug. There's the tack, repeat for the rest of the faces. Note that the speedometer is the one that takes the extra long screws. The rest of the screws on the entire panel are the same. This is what you're left with, a beautiful gauge cluster. And the last thing you have to do is called setting the needles. And that's putting the needles on in their correct places. You're actually gonna have to install the cluster in the car with no plastic cover on it to get all the needles right. The speedometer is pretty easy. You just wanna install it in the zero position and it's actually self-centering. 
Um, so it should be in the right position, but you're gonna have to obviously drive the car to test that out. For the tachometer, there are several different ways to do this. If you have a standalone, you're lucky because you can just plug your laptop in and verify that your tach reads the same as your ECU. If not, you want to drive the car before swapping out your gauges and see what RPM you're at in a certain gear at a certain speed and then rematch that after you put your new faces on. For the fuel needle, the best way to do it is just to fill the car up and then put the needle on in the full position or actually just above the full position if you want to be factory accurate. And same thing for the coolant temp gauge. Warm the car up all the way to operating temperature and then put it somewhere around the 12 o'clock position. I know that was like a blur of information, but like I said, there's a really detailed write-up on installing these faces. So I really encourage you to check that out as well. So for the speedometer, you can just put it on and give it a little test like this. Make sure it returns to the zero position. If it doesn't, you'll have to retry it. For the rest of the needles, I'm gonna put the cluster in the car and set all of their positions. So after you get your needle set, the reinstallation is exactly the opposite of the steps you took to pull the cluster out. And then when you're done with that, you're ready to go do some pulls. Well, I'm getting ready to go stir up the neighborhood. Make sure you check out the Rev Limiter online store and don't forget to subscribe if you like the content. I will see you in the next one.